Hi and welcome to the in-depth guide for Cartoon Mobler. Let's start with an example of how we can use Anchor Point to create some interesting effects. So I've got a shape layer here, it's just a circle, and what I'm going to do is do some position and rotation keyframes, three seconds long, just bring it all the way down to the bottom, and then let's say it rotates three times. Then I'm going to apply some ease and whiz, expo in and out. Actually, expo might be too severe, so let's try just a sign. And what we want to do is then apply Cartoon Mobler. It's currently looking pretty dull, so let's go ahead and just so we can see what we're doing, change the fill to a gray color and then let's increase the shutter angle to about 5000. Okay, so this is really boring and it looks bad because the anchor point is in the very center, but what we can do is offset that and get some kind of curves happening. That's a bit more fun. So let's actually increase the ease from sign to maybe quart. That's looking better. And now let's go for a cool gradient fill. And there we have our final result. You can keep tweaking the anchor point just to see how it's going to look. More curls or less. This one's sort of like a corkscrew, and we can see we're getting some crunchy edges here. So we can just lower the amount of samples to smooth that out. Now let's make this a bit more advanced. I've got a little pre-composed X here, which I created just by creating two shape layers and rotating them. And we're gonna do a similar thing. So let's place this up the top, position down to the bottom, and then let's rotate it as well. Let's rotate it twice. And for this one, I'm gonna choose Expo, and then let's apply Cartoon Mode Blur to it. Now it's not really working, and that's because we have to apply continuous rasterization. And I'm gonna set the shutter angle again to 5000, and let's set this to a fill color that we can see what's going on. So that's pretty fun, but the fill is a little bit boring at the moment. What I'm going to do is come in here to the X and I'm going to create a new layer and let's add a gradient to that. And let's make this a radial gradient and set the black to the middle. Then I'm going to set the black color to this purple and the white color to this red. Then I'm just going to pre-compose the X and call it X pre-comp. And then I'm going to mat the X with the gradient. And now let's take off the enable fill and we can see we're getting a sort of ambient occlusion effect there just because the X has a, has a nice pattern applied to it. But I don't want that on the actual X. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it, but remove the effect, just add a fill, and then set that color there. So at least we're not getting the pattern. But it doesn't really stand out, so I'm going to add a levels effect to it. Make it a bit brighter. Well, you can't really make it brighter because it's pitch red. But just add a tint as well. looking good. Now we can play around with the anchor point as we were before, but I'll just have to play around with both of them at the same time. Now we're getting some different curves as before, some more extreme than others, some requiring more samples than others. And just keep in mind that although the slider for the shutter angle only goes to 3600, you can really crank this too about 100,000, so you're not limited by the amount that the slider shows there. In this example, we're gonna have a play with scale. So I've got some text here. I'll just center the anchor point and center that in the view. And I'm gonna cheat this a little bit and make it so that it scales into the O of hello. And position and scale keyframes, let's go to five seconds and make it really big. Now, any minute error that I had inside the place in the anchor point is gonna show up real big. That's why I'm also keyframing the position. So let's cheat the position by moving it over a bit. And it completely fills the screen. Cool. Now let's apply Expo in and out to that using ease and whiz, and let's see what we get. All right, so that looks good, but I want it to start at absolute zero. There we have it. So now let's apply Cartoon Mobler to this and 
seconds just so we can see it. I'm going to make it gray and let's make it 2000 so it get more of an effect there. Now this can be very slow because we're dealing with such large buffers. So what I'm going to do is just work out an adaptive resolution for now. And let's see if we can get away with lower samples as well. Seems like we can't see the samples too much even with 0.1. So I'm going to stick with that. But you'll notice that we're getting some cutoff here and that's because we have the buffer extending to just here. It doesn't extend further. If it did extend this big, I think we'd run out of memory in a heartbeat. So what we'll just do for this is create the comp at a much larger size than we want. So just say this was gonna be 720p. Well, I'll make this maybe 2500 by 1080. And then if we were to pre-comp that, put this into our 1280 by 720 window, then we shouldn't be getting any of that cutoff. There we have it. And we can see that we're getting too few samples here at the start, but then it's about the right amount of samples here. So we'll just keyframe the amount of samples. So let's boost this to 0.2 and at the start, I'm going to boost it to one. So here's the full resolution version of that. That's looking nice. Let's just do one more quick example with scale. What I want to do is transition from zero to 500% scale. And I've just got the cartoon mobler applied here, shutter angle set to 2000. And we're not getting too many problems there except for some crunchy edges. The crunchy edges in the middle are due to wherever the anchor point is. So if the anchor point was up here, we get different results. So what we could do for that is maybe just set the uh, samples per pixel to a bit lower to avoid those hopefully so that we still have enough. But at the start we don't towards the end we do. So we'll just keyframe those. Point one here and then one to start with. That looks good, but one thing we can't do is actually reverse this. So I'll just uh, reset the samples per pixel to 0.5 all the time. And let's time reverse these scale keyframes. So we start very large and then we get smaller. And you'll notice that the quality of the Cartoon Mobler motion trail gets worse and worse as it gets smaller. And that's because it's copying that buffer from this frame. And as you can see, it's getting much smaller. So if we try and scale it up, it's going to get decrepit. It's going to get more JPEG-y. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? I just want to That's the limitation of the plugin, unfortunately, but I thought I should make you all aware of that. Cartoon Mobler is fantastic for creating transitions, but I might be a little bit biased. Though don't take my word for it, let's create a transition. So I'll apply Cartoon Mobler to a very small circle, and what we want to do is keyframe the anchor point and the rotation. So we start in the very center, and then maybe over the course of four or five seconds, what we want to do is basically push the circle to the very edge, and then Let's make it rotate, say, seven times. And what we want to do is apply Ease and Wiz Expo to that. But silly me, I rotated it seven degrees, not seven times, so better fix that. Not bad. What we want to do is just increase the shutter angle a lot. So let's go to maybe 25,000. And what we want to do is apply the ramp fill so we can see what's going on here. So what we can see is it's looking pretty good, but unfortunately there's some holes in our shape and we don't want that. So what we want to do is increase the rev revolutions a little bit. And now we don't have those holes. Now 25,000 seems to be a bit much. So let's just go 20,000. And we can also set the adaptive resolution to work a bit faster and get a preview. That's looking good, but what we want to do is at the start, and I'll just set this back to auto, we want to make this actually full. I want to keyframe the mask expansion so that we don't see it at the very start. So let's start it around mask expansion here, and the size of this shape is 50, so if we go minus 25, that will pretty much, and we set that to expo in and out. And now it sort of appears out of nowhere. So that's looking good for the start. Now what we want to do is just render that off as a PNG RGBA 
just so that we can work quicker because we're not finished just yet. So in the QuickTime options, let's go PNG and let's go RGBA and render that off as a pre-render. Then let's take that pre-render and put it in another comp. So that's looking good. Towards the end, we do need more samples, but I won't worry about that because uh, I made this larger than I need it to be. So we can just cut those out. And what I want to do is just duplicate it a few times and then just go into Rift, which is a fantastic script from A Scripts. I'm not sure who makes it, but they did a good job. And what we want to do is just offset it a little bit. And for every single one of these, except for the top one, we want to add a fill. Actually, let's just add it to the second top one so we can see what's going on here. So now it's got a red one underneath and you'll see that basically this is just here to fill in the gaps because eventually it starts unraveling because we didn't uh, set the uh, shutter angle to 10 bajillion. So what we want to do is make this black and apply that to all of these. And now if we turn on the alpha, we can see should stay black for the entire duration. Maybe we just need a few more of these and then it should stay black. Awesome. So now what we want to do is take this pre-render and drag that into a new pre-comp. And to create this transition effect, I'm just going to add a fill. I want to transition between blue. Then we can tint this uh, transition that we've made so that we can color it some nice pretty colors. And I want it to be yellow and then transition to green. And there we have it. Obviously you need to zoom in and we just need to extend it a little bit, but that's okay. And here we have our transition. Beautiful. So that's about it. Please check us out on Facebook. We're pretty lonely here at the moment. So we'd love to have you like the page and get involved and we'll be updating the Facebook page with all our cool products coming in 2018. And I trust that you'll enjoy using Cartoon Mobler.